Hey guys, Ewan here, and in this video we're gonna have a lot of bodybuilding updates, especially about Arnold Classic. But before we get to that point, we're gonna have some bodybuilding drama on the menu. Actually, YouTube bodybuilding drama, I guess I can say it that way. It's Nick Strength and Power, actually. I'm gonna mention him a little, I'm gonna tell you what I think about this whole situation with him, Callum Van Mogger, Kenny Kale, Generation Iron, and so on. So basically, this is what Nick posted yesterday. This guy right here, I don't know who the hell this is, Conan the Barbarian is his nick. He has about 80,000 subscribers, actually followers, and apparently Nick cares about his opinion because he posted a story in which he basically said, I was a big fan of Nick's strength and power till yesterday. He says you sold your channel for Generation Iron and Callum and Mogger. And Nick got hooked, or did he? Well, he posted this lengthy explanation about this whole situation. But what I'm thinking is that this guy who posted this story, if, if he is a true, well, I don't like to use the word fan, but if he's a true subscriber, follower of Nick's strength and power, I'm sure he knows that Nick doesn't like Generation Iron. He, he hates Generation Iron. I mean, how could anybody like Generation Iron, really? This is the type of stuff that Generation Iron does. They posted this photo right here, for example, with Sean Ray and uh, Patrick, I don't know what his last name is, the Valuetainment uh, YouTube channel guy. Uh, they had an interview, it was a two hour long interview, an amazing interview, really gives you a perspective, a, an introspective into bodybuilding behind the scenes and so on. If you really like bodybuilding, watch the interview, but basically they said here, Sean Ray blasts Phil Heath in recent interview. Which is entirely not true. I watched the whole thing, he never blasted him. He actually said only the nicest thing about Phil. And they actually were even taking Nick's videos a couple of uh, maybe like months ago, maybe like a year or two ago, and they were posting them on his website without his permission. Before I started my YouTube channel, I was following Nick's Strength and Powers every video, basically. I didn't skip a video for four years, really. Right now, I also follow him. I don't watch everything, but I watch, uh, at least I skim almost all of his videos. So I know that he hates Generation Iron. I know that he has nothing to do with Callum and Mogger. And I know that he doesn't like Kenny Ko. He was just honest with his opinions. And I agree with him. I made a video about this and I pretty much have the same attitude about Callum and about Kenny Ko. He says in the video the kid will be taken care of and supported fully by Callum. He just wants nothing to do with the mother. So what exactly did Callum do wrong here? I don't think Callum needed to share any of this. I don't think he owed anybody an explanation. I think his business was put out there by this girl and Kenny when it shouldn't have been. The record has been set straight. And the only thing that we really are waiting for now is the apology video from Kenny K.O. This is the part of the last video that he made about this topic. He said that he's not going to make any more of those. In my opinion, he made those to get views because that's his job. That's what he should do. Nobody can blame him for that. That's his job. He's a reporter. That's what we do. And uh, it's only about whether you agree with his opinion or not. This Instagram guy, whoever the hell he is, Conan the Barbarian, didn't agree with him and he said that he was a sellout. Now Nick actually responded to him and I'm pretty sure that he didn't need to do that. I think the reason why he did it is to create some drama, to create some traction. I don't think he really cares what people think about him. He has been doing this job for a while and the reason why he stayed in the game for so long is because he manages to keep his head out of this stuff. Because this is just what he does, it's his job, it's not his personality really. And I think the only reason why he posted that explanation is for traction, really. And me personally, by making this video, by justifying him and what he says and agreeing with him, is not myself kissing his ass and hoping for, I don't know, some kind of a shout out or something because that's not gonna happen. I'm stealing his livelihood, literally, I'm making the same content that he does. So of course he's not gonna mention me in, in his videos, of course he blocked me so I can't comment on his videos and promote myself over there, and that's totally fine. That's totally fine. I'm using his work that he was working on for years, and I'm taking advantage of that. I'm taking a small percentage of his audience, people are coming to my channel, watching my videos, and I make a revenue from that, then it provides me more money so I can do my bodybuilding, my thing, you know? And, and I'm happy with my situation. I don't want my channel to grow anymore, basically, I'm happy with it the way it is right now, but it's probably gonna grow. By the way, guys, uh, I'm buying a new microphone. You told me about this many times before, so I spoke to my sponsors, Old School Labs, and they are gonna buy me a new microphone, so looking forward to that. Hopefully I'm gonna get a camera as well, I'm gonna make some vlog videos or something like that. Anyways, about the Nick, tell me what you think. Do you think he was wrong with what he said about Callum? Do you think this was all uh, fabricated because he wants more traction and more drama about his channel? 
This is just my opinion, this is what I have to say, and I said it. Let's go with the next story, a little bit more bodybuilding related actually. Why did I say a little bit more? It's 100% bodybuilding related and it is Nathan Diasha and his physique update. In about 4 weeks out of Final Classic. He looks soft. He looks soft. Does this mean that Nathan is going to be out of shape at the Arnold Classic? Not necessarily. But usually, when we see guys out of shape at this close to the show, it means that they're not going to be at their 100%. Is this going to be fine conditioning at the day of the show? Probably. He's just flat, I think. The shadow is not that great. He's not fat. He's not watery. He's a little bit flat and blurry. He almost has no separation. He's not hard. He is not even big enough. Not very good shape of Nathan Diasha, especially at four weeks out of Arnold Classic. I am sure that he's gonna be in shape at the showtime. But is he gonna do great? Is he gonna beat Patrick Moore, for example? I don't think so. I think Patrick is going to beat Nathan Diasha. That's gonna be a huge success for, for Patrick, of course. Here you can see the difference. You can see the difference. You can see that Patrick is in much better shape. And look at that back. That back is looking seriously good right now. It's thick, it's shredded, and it's huge. I don't know how to pronounce this word differently. I hear a lot of people commenting down below that I'm saying it like he huge. But that's just my accent. Come on, guys, stop breaking my balls. I would like to hear you speak Serbian. <laughs> I'm trying my best over here. Huge, huge. Is that better? I'm gonna try my best. Anyways, <laughs> Patrick is looking huge right here. And he's looking lean and he's looking just on point, on point. Top four is best case scenario, in my opinion. I'm gonna make a special video about this soon, soon, prediction video for Arnold. I'm not gonna do it probably before two weeks out because last year when I did it, so many people fell out of the of the lineup. The same thing goes with Mr. Olympia. I'm gonna do it at about two weeks out. So let's go now with the next story. Rolly Winkler in his off season and he looks really off. He looks off. He looks like he's off the juice. Is that really the case? What the hell knows? But he doesn't look super hard, nor he looks super full. It is probably the least impressive edition of Rolly that I've seen in many years, actually. It's not really much. It's just his arm. But it doesn't look super impressive. His shoulders don't look that wide. His legs don't look very huge. It's huge, yeah. He doesn't look like Rolly Winkler as he usually does. Because this guy is probably the biggest bodybuilder of today's modern bodybuilding. He's really, really big. And here, I mean, sure, he looks big still, but not as big as he usually is. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. I mean, this is just a physique update. I'm just showing you what he looks like right now. I'm sure when he chooses to compete next, he's going to look amazing. He was in the top five at the Mr. Olympia competition. If the roles are still the same, he is qualified for the next Mr. Olympia. In my opinion, what he should do, if he wants to become the best in the world, he should just focus on the Mr. Olympia and bring the best shape possible and win the damn thing. In 2018, he beat the entire lineup of 2019. He only didn't beat Phil Heath and Sean Roden. If these guys don't come back and if Big Remy doesn't bring insanely shredded physique, Rolly can beat Brandon Curry and become the new Mr. Olympia. But that's not gonna happen anytime soon. As for now, you can see him right here. Pretty pale, pretty soft, not as big as usual. Rolly Winkler in his offseason. Alright, we have another physique update of 2018 Arnold Classic winner William Bonner. You can see his stomach right here, you can see his abs, you can see his arms, and you can tell that he is bringing the conditioning. As he always, always does. In my opinion, this guy has the biggest chances to win the Arnold Classic. I am predicting Big Ramy winning this show, winning the Arnold Classic. Why? Well, based on everything I saw so far, based on his previous performance, based on himself taking a break from bodybuilding 2019, I just get the idea that he's gonna bring something special to the table this year round. He is much, much bigger than William Bonek. If he just comes in shape, in decent shape, in pretty good conditioning, he's going to beat him. But, but, that's just a prediction for my channel. If I was a betting man, I wouldn't put the money where my mouth is. I would not bet on Big Ramy. I would bet on William Bonek. Because based on their previous performance, based on the history, he has the best chance to win it again. Is it gonna happen? I don't know. I'm gonna talk about this furthermore in my prediction video. As for now, William Bonek at four weeks out, looking shredded. 
I showed you this before, but in case you haven't seen it, I'm gonna mention it briefly. This is Dexter. This is Dexter at four weeks out. Can he win the Yano Classic? It's a big chance. It's a big chance. Top three is guaranteed for him. Look at him. 50 years old. 50 years old, looking amazingly full and shredded and everything. This man is the OG. This man is the OG. Props to him. Props to him. I can't explain how, how much I respect him and uh, my admiration for, the, for this bodybuilder right here. Huge, huge name in bodybuilding. A Hall of Famer. In the meanwhile, our classic physique Mr. Olympia champion, Chris Bumstead, is working hard in his offseason. He's looking big, really. Look at the legs. Those legs are really big. Yeah, they're pumped right now, but overall he's huge. I'm right now prepping for my show, Serbian Nationals, and I'm gonna do the classic physique as well as bodybuilding, classic bodybuilding. And um, looking at him right now, I can say that I need to do some growing in my offseason. I need to take like two years off and catch up to this guy. He's my age. He's my age, but he is much bigger. Look at him. He's huge in the offseason. Really big. Speaking about that, guys, if you want to follow me and my progress or my competition, you can follow me right here. It's even bodybuilding uh, underscore on Instagram. You can see my uh, physique updates, some posing footage. I'm going to get a better camera. I'm going to make some vlog videos or something. Yeah, this is it, basically. I mean, nothing special compared to Chris Bumstead, but it's something. Oh, who is this? Gabriella, hello there. <laughs> Let's go with the next story. I like to use the word story, but very often these are not stories. Just, for example, a physique update of Hassan Mustafa at about uh, 10 weeks out of St. Louis Pro. This guy is the future. Mark my words. He's gonna make some noise in the future years to come. And we also had uh, John Meadows actually making a video, a training video, with Brandon Curry, the Mr. Olympia himself. And it is a really good video about the back training. You can learn some new things, actually. I don't think it's gonna happen, but it actually happened. I learned some, some new things, really. Uh, a different way to look at back training. And that's something I really need. I want my back to be world-class back. So if you guys haven't already watched this video, go ahead and watch it. But here you can see basically that um, John Meadows is not a big guy. He, he's not that, uh, that big, that tall guy. And he wasn't really dwarfed by Brandon Curry. So Brandon is not that big, really. He's not that tall. He's actually pretty short. I'm sure I would be surprised if I saw him in person. Here you can see Steve Kuklo, who is also not super tall, standing next to uh, John Meadows and absolutely dwarfing him. It's, it's out angling, sure, but uh, still, I mean, you can see that uh, Brandon is not that really big. Especially for somebody like me. I'm, I'm, I'm six foot two, so I'm sure it would be a, a surprise if I ever met him in person. Anyways. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, and if you want to see more, subscribe. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.